The strange thing, and it's ironical now looking back on it, was one of the people who came in and rescued me, gave me energy, it was Taylor Hawkins. Suddenly he's there, he's drumming for this track which I've written for a, um, a video game called Cyborg. And he comes in full of joy and love, some fun, like a little monkey climbing all over it and just full of this passion. And um, I love that track. And I view it again with even more love now because now we lost Taylor, which to me is such a tragedy. God, the world has lost a, a great force. The fact that Taylor Hawkins is on the album now is, is it's almost like a bittersweet tragedy and I hate drawing uh, drawing tragedy into the world of, of rock and roll because rock and roll is so joyous and lifts up so many people's hearts but I, f I feel that we always have to touch on on a bit of tragedy and the fact that you'd lost Cozy and Taylor came in tell us t how he made you feel when he came in because you know remembering the happier times first how how was it having taylor hawkins to sort of lift you in those sessions for this album it was wonderful not because he was the famous taylor hawkins of the famous foo fighters because they weren't famous by then they were just starting off and they were great in those early days there was a fantastic sort of raw magic i remember seeing them at brixton academy blowing the place apart with just because they they didn't seem to take themselves seriously, they just kind of knocked down all the barriers. And Taylor was a was a kid, really. He'd just come out of drumming for uh, Alanis Morissette, and he had an opportunity now to do what he really wanted to do, which was play hard rock. The funny thing was he turned out to be the greatest Queen fan in the world, and that was always a shock to me because he seemed to be a lot cooler than we were, you know. I think Taylor Hawkins single-handedly made Queen cool to a new generation because um, he knew everything about us, everything at that point. He and Pat Smear um, gave us an award at some ceremony. I can't even remember where it was now. But it became obvious at that point, really early on, that they knew every, they knew more about us than we knew. It's always been a great thing. So he was excited to come in and play. I was excited to have him in there because, my God, I hadn't really hit, seen anybody hit the drums like that. Now, I've seen a lot of the world's greatest drummers and been very fortunate to work with them, but Taylor was like some kind of lightning. I don't know what it was that he had in his body, but it's extraordinary. And whenever I saw Foo, Foo Fighters concerts, I ended up just watching Taylor the whole time because the way his body moves and the precision, the speed, the, the, the passion was extraordinary. You know, and there are some extraordinary drummers around, and I know lots of them. But Taylor, I think everyone would agree, was a very special golden boy. I was speaking to him a week before this terrible accident happened, and he's full of joys, just full of laughs and full of fun, um, saying, you know, when are we going to get together? We need to make more music, all this kind of stuff. It's a, yeah, like you say, I don't like to wallow in tragedy. I don't like to, to linger there. But this is life. Life is full of pain and joy and grief and um you have to come through it all and and just kind of live with it and live it and music is the great way of healing i think more than anything else we all heal by sharing stuff through music and god knows rock music is the best music for that that's why i do it i don't think there's any other music which which is food for the soul like rock music is <laughs> 